Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show how to save and load game data within Harlow 3.3. So we know that we have access to multiple things within Harlow. We can create variables, we can use data structures within those variables as well, data maps, data sets, strings, we also sometimes find ourselves in situations where we want to save the value of variables and then come back later. That is, we want to give a player reader the ability to save what they're doing, close out of the game, and then potentially return back to some later point in the story when they return back to the game again. So the ability to save and load data. Now, because Harlow works within web browsers, it doesn't have the ability to save to files because web browsers don't allow that. That's a security issue. However, we can save data within the web browser itself. So we have the ability, assuming a user or a reader has not turned that off in a web browser, to save certain data and then pull it back up, restore it back again. Within Harlow, we call this save game and load game. But what we're really talking about is the history of the story, what passages we have visited, as well as any story-wide variables that have been created. So when we're doing dealing with this within Harlow, we have three macros, saved games, save game, and load game. The first macro allows us to test if a save game exists. This is a collection of any saved games based on the data map. So it's a data map that connects whatever save game name we've given it, and we can test to see if saved games contains a particular type of string data, which we'll look at here in just a moment. Save game allows us to save the current game at the exact spot that we save it, so the current passage and any story-wide variables, and load game, the kind of opposite or inverse, if you might think of it as a save game, the ability to load back to that particular point in both passage history and story-wide variables. So generally, it's a good idea, as is mentioned right here, to test if saved data can be created. And the reason for this is because in some web browsers, this is turned off for security precautions. It also might be turned off if you're working within something like an incognito or private window, and then you close it and that data gets erased. So it's always good to see, hey, can you create saves at all? Because if you can't, you need to kind of warn players or readers that they may not be able to save their game. So in this case, I have right here, save game, game save A. And this particular value right here is not actually important. I'm just using it for this example. So you can name it whatever you want, as long as it's something that you can remember. So game save a inventory whatever your name of a game is that will be the name to access the value so data map name value pair of whatever is stored internally through harlow in the web browser itself if it save game is successful it will return a true value right here so if this works then you know saves are enabled if it does not work harlow will tell you so and in which case you can't save data Although in most cases, you will be able to save data unless, again, your reader or player has very specifically gone into the web browser and disabled that. So when a game is loaded, it will restore everything up to that point. So the entire history of whatever passages have been visited, as well as, again, all story-wide variables. So let's move over to example two. So I'm going to allow right here a reader or player to enter their name. And then we're going to link go to chapter two, which is down here. And then we're going to save and it's going to see hello name. So save game right here using the same name that I'm using for this example. And again, yours can be whatever you want it to be, name of the game or something else, as long as they all match. And so let's go ahead and start the story from example two. All right, so I'm going to enter my name. And then I'm going to go to chapter two. And it says, hello, Dan. And the other thing that happened is it saved the game. So it saved exactly where I was in passages. So we went from one passage to another, and there is a single story-wide variable called name that I created as part of input right here. So let's go ahead and close this right here. Now let's move over to example three. 
Example three says, if saved games contains game save A, which again I'm using for this particular example, then we provide a link to give the reader or uh, player the ability to have that choice and then load game the exact same thing. So the reason why I'm doing this is there might be some times where a reader or player arrives at loading data before it actually exists. So we always need to check, does this contain actual the data we're looking for? And if it does, we can go ahead and load it, because if it doesn't, we won't be able to load it. So we go ahead and check, hey, does this exist? Oh, cool, it exists. Let's go ahead and give a link. Once we click this link, it will then load us back to that exact point in history and restore all story-wide variables. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So remember over here, I said it to Dan, and we ended up on chapter two. So I'm going to go ahead and start the story from example three. Let's build and play. I'm going to click load game. And it's putting me right back on chapter two and restore the value of name right here to Dan. So it put us right back where we were with history and also restored story ride variables. Now, I keep emphasizing this point because we can get ourselves into some interesting issues if we automatically save or we automatically load. And in fact, Harlow will stop you from automatically loading when the story starts to prevent this very issue. Because what you don't want to happen is for a player or reader to return to a story and then it loads and then saves and then loads and then saves and loads and gets kind of stuck in a loop. So we generally want to give them the choice here with a link just for a little bit of pause and a little bit of agency to allow them to load. Keeping in mind, it will load them back. The other thing I want to note here is notice I created all of this and then we went to another passage because I knew that when this saved right here, it would take us right back to that exact point. And what you don't want to happen right here potentially is have the link here such that they set their name, click on save, and then when the save happens, it puts them right back at the beginning of this passage and they have to type in their name again. So generally you want to either go to another passage or go to a specific passage that then has the ability to work with that saved data. Keep in mind we're restoring not only story-wide variables, but again, the history of the play. So again, general idea is make sure Save data exists before you attempt to load it, or otherwise that will be an error. And generally you want to save games right here at the top of a chapter or the top of a section, and then the player or reader will be returned to that section or chapter when they do that. So if you're having them enter data, make sure you then go to another place that does that save and then start them from that place. Very similar to how a lot of video games will have you enter data at the beginning of the game, part of character creation or something else, and then save as part of the transition to a new scene or a new part of a game. And then when you start back, you don't start at character creation, you start at that next scene. So again, saving as part of introducing a chapter or section or however you want to think about that, and that will be the part they restore at. So as soon as save game happens, saves the history, saves all story-wide uh, data, and then when load game is used, restores right back to that point again. And of course, keep in mind, some readers or players may have this turned off in the web browsers, in which case Harlow can't use it. It's fairly rare, but it does happen. So generally test to see if you can create saves. If you can't and you want to use saves, give a player or reader the opportunity or at least knowledge of that you won't be saving. And if you will be saving, let them know that will happen. And again, save at the part of chapters or sections or whatever, because when they load back, they will be loading back to that exact part. All of which is available within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.